In the scripture, we see unity between God the Father and God the Son. We never see any jealousy. What we see is perfect love being expressed from God the Father to His Son and from His Son, Messiah Yeshua, to His Father. And we see that this love is expressed with sharing. Why do I say that? Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of John and chapter 16. The book of John and chapter 16. We're to begin this session with verse 15. Now, we've talked about the responsibility that believers have in being a faithful witness, bearing forth the truth of God, bringing the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit into this world so that those might know the truth. And, and what we're going to be learning today is the principle in order to help us accomplish that call upon our life. And I guess the first thing that I would want to say to you is this, that you have a call upon your life to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit. And what is Messiah sharing with us in order to assist us in receiving that call and carrying it out in faithfulness? Well, you see, Messiah was sent into this world for a similar purpose. What is that purpose? He says over and over, I, I don't speak of my own, but whatever I hear my Father says, this I share. Well, that's exactly what we should be doing through the Holy Spirit. So look at verse 15 and what Messiah says. Some very strong words of, of empowerment for us. He says, all which the Father has is mine. He says, on account of this I have said that, not from myself he shall speak, but he will proclaim to you. Isn't that interesting? Because he says once more that it's not of himself but what he hears. Everything that he has is the Father's, and he's bestowing that. We need to realize that the only thing that we have to offer God the only thing that we can do is what we receive from Him. That's the only thing that we can do, His ministry through us. And that's what He's trying to show us in this passage. So once again, verse 15. All which the Father has is mine. On account of this I have said that from myself I receive and I will proclaim to you that a little while and you will no longer see me. And again in a little while, you shall see me. Now, this is very important when we look at it in the biblical language. Why do I say that? Because even though I've translated it similarly in, in English, there's a very big difference in the Greek text. Look at it again. A little while also you will not see me. Now, that is the word thereo. It means to perceive. To, to, to receive a, a vision, not in a prophetic sense, but just receive sight. Not as if you were blind, but you see something. But then it goes on and says, and again, in a little while, also you will see me. But this is the word, aroa. Now, why is that important that there's a change in word? Well, this word, aroa, has to do with a greater vision. That is seeing something more clearer, clearly. How can we understand that? Well, you look at something with your own eye and you behold it, and then you put it under a microscope and you see it so much clearer. That's what he's going to be saying. So we understand Messiah, we perceive him. He's going to go away. But when he returns, we're going to perceive him so much better. We're going to understand that he is not just a, a anointed one, but he is God incarnate. Now, we should know that, but when we witness his return, when we see him, when he comes back, we're going to have a greater appreciation for his identity as the Son of God. Now, why do I say that? Well, you look sometime at the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and what you find the book of Revelation is, is the revelation of Messiah Yeshua. And when Messiah is described in Revelation chapter 1, it takes the imagery 
from God the Father. He is not going to look anything like we think or those pictures of him. When he comes back, he is going to be shockingly different. And that's what he's talking about here. Our faith is going to mature. We're going to be able, and this is what he's trying to tell us. We are going to be able to perceive him more appropriately. That is, we're going to have a greater understanding of his identity because of why? Because our faith is going to mature. As our faith grows, as our spiritual understanding deepens and matures, it changes our understanding, us identifying Messiah. Yes, we know he's the Christ. Yes, we know that he's the Savior. Yes, we know that he's the eternal Son of God. But we are going to grow in a proper appreciation for his identity through the service we are doing. That's what he's trying to say, and he's going to give a very key example of that in a moment. So he says in this passage, verse 16, you're to not see me in a little while, but in again, you're going to see me because I go to the Father, verse 17. They, therefore, of his disciples, they said to one another, what is this? what he says to us a little while also and we will not see, he we will not see you will not see me and again in a little while you shall see me and that I go to the father so they hear these things and they're not getting it what does it speak of it speaks of a, a improper a, a understanding of who he is that is insufficient they don't understand that he's going back to the Father because that is his origin. There was never a time that he didn't exist with his Father. You can't go past in times past and not have Messiah as the Son of God being with his Father. But the disciples, they didn't get it at this time. They had to have their faith grow and mature. Verse 18, Therefore, uh, they said, what is this that he says to us? A little while, but they, we did not want, but that we do not want to, to speak. Okay, they didn't want to ask him. Verse 19, therefore Yeshua, knowing what they were wanting to ask, he said to them, concerning what are you inquiring from one another? Because uh, uh, I've said a little while and you won't perceive me and again a little while and you will see me. Now this is the third time we've come across this expression. Word says a little while you're not going to see me and in, again in a little while you will. Now what's he talking about? Well there's no debating. He is talking about he's going to ascend back into the heavens but then again. He's going to return. He's speaking about the last days. Now, if you doubted that this passage had to do with the last days, uh, you can no longer doubt. When he says, you're not going to see me, and then you will see me, he's speaking about his return in order to establish the kingdom. He is not speaking simply about after resurrection. Because even though they grew in their understanding to a saving knowledge of Messiah, let me tell you, when Messiah comes back, it is going to be even a greater revealing of him as the eternal son of God. Once more, he says, you know, I'm speaking to you because you are desiring among one another to know what that means. A little while, you're not going to see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. Verse 20. Truly, truly, I say to you that you are going to weep and lament, but the world is going to rejoice. Now, this is another key hermeneutical passage to help us rightly interpret what the right meaning is. Why do I say that? Well, I say that because if you go back to the crucifixion, Yes, we know that there was a select group of leaders of, of Israel that wanted and rejoiced with his death, his crucifixion. Let me tell you, that's not what it says. It says that the world is going to rejoice. Now, the world, very important. It has to do with the last 
days.